Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Tristan Claridge, and I'm the convener of this webinar series for the International Social Capital Association. Now, the association's mission is to advance the research and practical application of, of the social capital concept. And if you're not already, you're, you're welcome to become a member of that association. In this session, we welcome Professor Paolo Bonanno from the University of Bergamo for a presentation about organized crime and social capital formation. Paolo is a full professor in economics at the Department of Economics at the University of Bergamo since 2016. He, is the, uh, he was a vice chancellor for research from 2015 to 2021, and his postdoctoral work was at the University of California at Berkeley in 2005 and 2006. In addition to his PhD in economics, Paolo has an MSc in economics from the London School of Economics. And his research interests are in applied microeconometrics in the fields of economics of crime, social interactions, and applied economic history. He's published widely. Uh, among others, he's, he's published in the American Economic Review, uh, the Journal of European Economic Association, the Journal of Law and Economics, and the Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization, and many, many others. Uh, welcome, Paolo. We're delighted that you you agreed to give us this webinar and over to you for the presentation. Yeah, so thank Kristen, Kristen for the introduction and thanks for having invited me. And today I'm going to um, introduce uh, a, a work uh, that I have together with Irene Ferrari and, and Alessandro Saia on... Um, the potential detrimental effect of organized crime on social capital formation. And um, I would focus on uh, some issue related to the way in which we could measure social capital using general data and uh, over time as well. Um, I, oh, sorry, okay. So um, I, probably I, I have not to introduce what social capital is given the audience, but um, we know that in general, social capital is, is characterized by, is not a, a strictly defined concept, but is characterized by many factors that may facilitate uh, interaction and coordination amongst individuals and could, could, it could have mutual benefit for, for individuals in, in a society, in a network. And, um, and in, in many works, uh, and many words shows us uh, shows us how social capital is one of the key factors uh, for economic development, and uh, obviously um, um, during the um, I would say at least in economics during last starting from the Putnam work and but more more precisely during the last twenty years. There has been a growing literature on on social capital, relating social capital to many, to many uh, potential outcomes such as entrepreneurship, innovation, and uh, uh, but what is at least in economics represent a, a challenge is the fact that we cannot observe the, the evolution of social capital over time, as well as we are we do not have a precise uh, um, variable to measure social capital at the very granular level, such as I would say municipality or neighbor. And most of the work uh, uh, existing are using um, aggregated data at, at uh, if we use the uh, European uh, notation is at NATS2 level or NATS3 level or even at the state level. So what we we try to do in, uh, in, in that paper is, uh, try to understand uh, uh, in which way or which, which are the factors that may affect uh, social capital formation or social capital accumulation. And more, in speci more specifically, we, we focus on uh, um, a disruptive event at the municipality level and that I will discuss throughout the presentation, uh, but just to give you an, the, um, an introduction on, on that, in Italy, uh, municipality could be dissolved uh, uh, due to mafia infiltration. And so um, once uh, 
uh, there is evidence of uh, mafia infiltration of collusion between politicians and, and mafia, then uh, the, um, the, the municipal council uh, will, will be dissolved and the municipality will be run uh, for, by a commissioner for, for tw from 12 up to 24 months. So we are exploiting that sort of exogenous events in order to see how that, that event would affect social capital formation yeah, at the municipality level. So as I was saying before, there is a huge uh, literature on, uh, on social capital and, uh, and on one side, as well as there is a huge literature on, on, um, on organized crime and that uh, could affect significantly uh, the distribution um, of, uh, I would say, in, in our case, we are focusing on the distribution of social capital, but there is evidence about uh, the effect of organized crime on, on education, such as on other kind of, uh, on an economic development more in general. So um, what we, we will try to, um, to discuss uh, in, in, in that paper is uh, understanding uh, in which way uh, uh, social capital formation is affected by, that, by, by organized crime. And on the other side, we, which are the, the potential reactions of, uh, of the communities to, uh, to mafia infiltration in order to uh, behavioral effect uh, in, uh, in individual behavior or in community behavior in, uh, in, in reaction to, uh, to mafia infiltration, okay? So uh, I would go briefly on, on, on that, but uh, so there is a, a huge literature that has devoted a lot of attention to the, um, to the emergence of organized crime, okay? And uh, many papers uh, try to affect, uh, to, to study in which way organized crime is, is gonna affect uh, socioeconomic uh, outcome. So there is a recent paper by Fenizia and Saj on uh, American Economic Review that is relating uh, um, social capital to growth. There are papers on relating social capital to investment sorry, um, organized crime to investment, organized crime to local crime. And more in general, uh, many wars are trying to understand in which way organized crime. So I, I, I presented most of the paper uh, on, on Italy. Uh, I mean, given that my, my work is on Italy as well, but uh, there is a huge literature at the international level studying which way uh, both for, for US, but also for uh, developing country in, we, in which way organized crime is going to affect uh, uh, resource, uh, um, the use of public resource, distribution of resources, uh, voting, and many other factors that are strongly related to uh, socioeconomic growth. So, but um, on the other side, uh, uh, there is a, a growing literature in, on, uh, on social capital that try to understand um, in which way uh, social capital is, uh, is affecting the dimension of uh, so the social and economic dimension. So I would say that the, the, the main uh, uh, contribution is the one by Partinum uh, uh, on, um, on making democracy work, so that is, was uh, focusing on, uh, on, on Italy. But, and starting from, from that contribution, several um, uh, scholars has tried to understand in which way social capital, with different definition of social capital, clearly may affect, uh, for instance, economic growth, trans productivity, innovation, innovation, financial development, public good provision, and, uh, and, and many other dimensions related to uh, economics, uh, the, to economics life. And um, and that is uh, is um, there is a strong evidence that, as I was saying before, that social capital is sort of facilitating uh, coordination or interaction amongst individuals, and then has a positive effect on 
on um, on development uh, in general. Uh, but on the other side, uh, um, if we put together both those two literature, these two literature, I mean, uh, there is a there is a, a gap in the sense that there is very few literature trying to understand um, which is the effect of organized crime on uh, on social and human capital. There are few exceptions uh, in which uh, that more focus on uh, the effect of organized crime on human capital accumulation. So the effect of organized crime on 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 education, for instance, and effect of crime on on trust uh, that in in part is related to let's say social capital uh, using uh, victimization survey data. But um, as I I'm, I'm try to 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 discuss throughout my presentation, one of the main issue in uh, in most of the of the literature on the papers that I have been introduced to is related to the fact that most of the paper are using um, cross-sectional data, for instance, or they are using data at the very uh, uh, aggregated level. So in another way, um, they they do observe uh, social capital once in time, so in a particular year or in a particular period, and at very aggregated levels, such as that typically could be a region or could be a province or most of the paper uh, at the beginning of the at the end of the uh, <clears throat> 90s, we're using uh, uh, cross-country data. So obviously, uh, we know that the use of data is extremely important to measure a phenomenon, and in particular for what, 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 what it concerns social capital that is very uh, um, local phenomenon in, in many situations. It, it, it's also important having uh, the right data in order to exactly understand what, what what is the impact uh, of social capital on uh, socioeconomic outcome, as well as which is the, the impact of uh, other factors on social uh, on social capital? So what we we do we try to and I will spend time on that is uh, which is the measure of social capital that we 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 will use uh, in in our analysis and try to explore. Uh, in which way, um, answering to our question, organized crime is, is affecting uh, um, social capital formation. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, if I, so there are some very technical uh, aspects in, in the presentation. So, uh, so if you are not familiar with some of the, of the econometric techniques, I mean, just uh, at any time, stop me, and I, I will be happy to to be uh, more clear clearer on that. So, which is the the institutional content that we are exploiting in in um, <clears throat> in in uh, this specific setting? So, in uh, in Italy, in ninety one, uh, has been introduced a law that basically, <clears throat> in order to tackle mafia infiltration uh, in, uh, in, in local government. And then uh, basically elected public officials could be removed upon evidence of collusion with criminal organization. So how it works, so there is, this, uh, there is a, a, um, an investigation on that. And uh, after, after uh, it's proved that there, there, there exists uh, collusion, uh, or infiltration uh, between politician and, 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 and the mafia, uh, the local officials are removed and the central government appointed teams of three external commissioners. And, and commissioner can only manage ordinary, uh, can only take care of ordinary management. And they are appointed for a period between 12 to 18 months and that could be extended up to 24 months in exceptional case. So that measure, as many other measures that uh, we, we, we start, we, we had in Italy since uh, the, the 80s, and then nowadays are, are, are extended to many other countries that are facing a criminal organization as well, uh, has been very um, 
very useful in uh, tackling crime, uh, in tackling uh, the diffusion of organized crime. So, uh, um, and that is exactly so. In uh, in eighty two, we had uh, we had a law that introduced uh, what is called the com uh, confiscation of uh, mafia goods. Um, and have the possibility of redistributing mafia goods and so whatever is uh, from firms to uh, houses uh, to to buildings uh, uh, to the community and that is one and another uh, piece uh, of legislation uh, that try to tackle um, and avoid that uh, criminal organization could could, could uh, infiltrate uh, uh, public and local government. So the crucial aspect is uh, uh, how to measure social capital, because uh, first of all, it is is uh, uh, is is difficult to uh, precisely define uh, uh, what social capital is, because it's a multi-dimensional concept, as as, as you uh, as you know. And on the other side, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, we may be more interested in uh, uh, understanding one specific dimension of social capital that could be altruism that could be uh, social interaction that could be trust so i mean given this multidimensionality clearly uh, that that potentially could represent a pro but also it could represent a, a cons uh, um, according to uh, to the kind of answer that we would like to, to to the kind of question that we would like to answer and um, mm, and the other main drawback uh, that is uh, related to the social capital literature is the use of data that, or well, it's not specific of the literature, but to the availability of data that typically are available at uh, provincial or regional level. And, um, and that is, uh, uh, it could represent an issue considering that, uh, um, uh, most of the kind of interaction that we are interested in happens at a, a lower level of aggregation. And on top of that, um, in, at least uh, in, uh, in economics, most of the, most of the, <clears throat> sorry, most of the, mm, of the data available are time invariant. So differently said, we measure social capital in a particular year or after 20 years or, so we do not have a, we do not have time variant data that allows us to understand which is exactly the evolution of social capital over time. And that clearly could represent an issue if you want to understand not necessarily the effect of social capital on socioeconomic uh, outcomes, but more understanding how social capital evolves over time. So because, I mean, um, um, so the... Um, the first book by Patenham, Making Democracy Work, was in a way uh, giving us the impression that social capital, as many other uh, social, uh, social, var social cultural variables, were in a way time, time invariant. So, uh, and basically, what happened in uh, what was happening in Italy today was part of uh, what happened in Italy, I don't know, 300 years ago, and the same for many other countries. But on the other side, uh, um, for instance, more, more recently, uh, I do not remember exactly which year he published his, his second book on, uh, on Bullying Alone, that uh, was Bullying Alone, uh, the, the title of this book. It, it provides the fact that, for instance, social cap that there was a huge depletion of social capital over time in the US in the last, uh, I would say, 30, 40 years. And so on, on one side, uh, clearly understanding which is the historical or cultural components of social capital is crucial, but on the other side, understanding the evolution of social capital over time is also important, given that we are experiencing many factors that are modifying uh, uh, the way in which individuals interact, and that clearly may have a strong effect on, on, um, on, uh, on social capital formation as well. So what we try to, to do in, in, uh, in our work is using uh, or we try to use the variables that <clears throat> allows us to measure, or at least we argue that allows us to measure social capital at the municipality level, and also allows us to observe 
how social capital evolved over time, over 20 years uh, at that level of aggregation. So we try to overcome that kind of problem that I, 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 I told, uh, but clearly on the other side, we had a limitation since that is, a, I mean, this kind of variables that allows us to measure the evolution of social capital over time uh, are, allows us to uh, look at one specific dimension of social capital and not social capital as a whole. Okay. So it, as in any kind of uh, approach and an analysis, we are facing a trade-off. So on one side, we could choose to use a time invariant and very aggregated uh, data, or on the other side, we could, we could use a highly disaggregated data and time variant data, but uh, with the trade-off of being able to measure a specific dimension of social capital. Okay. So in what we, we will consider, and I will discuss that uh, in, in a second, we will consider a novel measure of social capital at the municipality level that is in Italian is called Cinque per Mille is that the, the literal translation would be five for 2000, but it's basically is, um, as, I will, uh, discuss, as I will introduce you, is uh, taxpayers can choose to devote uh, five, uh, <coughs> Per two thousand, uh, per thousand income tax by signing one of the special books that appear on the tax declaration model. So that is not an extra tax, but uh, given your your tax, okay, you can choose to allocate part or or of the tax that you have to pay. So that part of the tax that you have to pay to to some specific uh, uh, for some specific purposes that. Typically, you can choose to, um, uh, using that part of your tax, you can choose to support organization, to support your municipality, or to support a sport association. So in a way, um, that, was, that has been introduced uh, in order to support public goods and services through, uh, tax, uh, mm, through uh, tax collection. So, what, what I want to stress is that it's not uh, an extra tax, but is uh, is uh, so the um, taxpayers have the possibility of decide how to allocate part of their taxes to different for different aim, and so that five uh, uh, cinque per mille is uh, has been introduced exactly. Uh, for, for that, okay. So, and basically yeah, you, the way in which it works uh, in, in Italy as in, in any other country, uh, any organization has a sort of ID code, ID tax code or fiscal code, uh, whatever. So you have to fill uh, with the number of the ID or of the ID tax code uh, that box. Or alternatively, you could choose uh, to, to give that money directly to, to your municipality in order to pursue a uh, specific uh, policy related to, uh, um, to social activities. Okay. So you have that two options, basically. One is uh, expressing your um, uh, through the ID tax code of each organization, the your, your willingness to give money to that organization. Okay. So obviously uh, not all organizations are eligible for, for receiving uh, Cinque per Mille, but you have to uh, fall within the purpose defined by the law. Okay. So that is basically uh, organization that has a social, uh, um, that are implementing social uh, activities in the municipality or are implementing, for instance, uh, uh, research in specific sectors and 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 so on and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> and and as I told you, also municipality can receive money. Okay, uh, can be beneficiary of the of the of cinque per mille, but they uh, they are also forced to allocate uh, uh, the money that they, they will eventually receive uh, to 
only to social activities. So which is, uh, at least from our point of view, the advantages of uh, Cinque per Mille. So first of all, it allows us to measure uh, individual. First of all, allows us to measure a behavior, okay? Uh, and, and not a preference. So, and that is, uh, I mean, it, I mean it, it, it's particularly relevant uh, in, in economics. So distinguishing between behavior and preferences. So I, I could have a preference or eventually once we are using um, survey data, in which, for instance, they ask, uh, how do you trust uh, individuals that is in your community? I mean, your answer could be correct, but one thing is what I'm going to uh, answer to that kind of question. And the other thing is the way in which I'm be I will behave in the real life. Okay? So, and, uh, <clears throat> and that it could be particularly uh, important distinguishing between a behavior and 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 the preference. Um, on top of that, um, this kind of this measure that we we used um, has the advantage of being measured at the municipality level, so at the very fine grain level. So in Italy, for ju just to give you a, an idea, we have more than eight thousand municipalities. So uh, we have the uh, roughly 100 provinces uh, and 20, 20 regions, and we have more than 8,000 municipalities. So that is a very uh, disaggregated level, uh, geographically disaggregated level. And, uh, and then that measure is a uh, time variant. So start, um, um, we are able to uh, observe the evolution of the uh, uh, these measures starting from 2006 onwards. So, and and the other advantage is that that any every year we could update our uh, our data. Okay, so we starting from the um, the beginning. Uh, so when the law has been introduced, so that law has been introduced in 2006. So starting from 2006, we will be able to measure the way in which uh, individuals decide to allocate the five per mille. Uh, over time okay so um so uh, this measure basically capture it, the decision made by individuals to contribute to the well-being of their community okay and the other aspect is that differently from a other kind of contribution that is not it does not represent an extra cost for the individuals so uh that that could be um, another aspect that uh, we would like to um, to disentangle. So, and um, financing or supporting non-profit organization or organization that work in in a, in in a, in, in a, for for social uh, activities, individuals could bolster community welfare and for, and foster cohesion. Okay. So, and moreover. And that is extremely important. You do not have to think a box, a box. So that could be something that, in a way, I mean, under a veil of ignorance, and and just to to save time, you just pick the first box that comes to your mind. Okay. Here you have to put exactly the ID tax code of the organization to which you wanna give the money. So. Even if you, so it, it could be costly in the sense that you have to uh, add that that kind of information, and uh, and you have to, and moreover, that represent a conscious choice made by the individual. So a different thing is uh, having a box in which you can tick a box. I give the money to the state. I give the money to my municipality. I give the money to my region, or I give the money to whatever. Okay. So, and that is a sort of mechanical thing. In that case, is is a conscious decision in which you have to put the ID tax code of the organization to which you want to uh, give the money, okay? And that implies that individuals, there, there, is a, there is a conscious decision made by individuals, okay? And that we, we believe that is important in understanding uh, uh, the 
why that kind of measure could be as several advantages, but as well as may, may have other kind of disadvantages. But we we believe that has several advantages with respect to other kind of measure used uh, typically for for social time. So um, <clears throat> what we uh, we do? So I mean, I will not be too specific on that. Uh, in the sense that in the paper we are performing several different kind of uh, uh, analysis using different measures. So we use the the rate of uh, taxpayer, we use the number of taxpayer, we use the log of taxpayer just to prove that, just to give the evidence that our results are consistent using different uh, transformation of our variables or using a different uh, uh, different approaches. But uh, what is important for, for, for our um, uh, analysis is that um, We have the number of taxpayers who have specified the fiscal idea of a particular nonprofit organization located in a given municipality in a given year. So basically, we know for each so nonprofit organization okay, the number of taxpayers that decide to give money to that organization. So, and for each organization, given that we have the, the fiscal idea, we know the municipality and we know the year. Clearly, as I was saying before, the, one of the potential drawbacks is that we observe the data at the organization level. Okay? So we only observe the number of taxpayers that have donated their cinque per mille to each association, but we don't know where uh, taxpayers uh, um, uh, actually live. Okay. But we, I, I will try to, to show you in which way we would address to that issue. So, and um, we decide exactly to address that aspect to on, given that for each organization, we have the tax code and we also have the category uh, to which the organization belongs. So, and basically the, uh, the main discrimination that we have is that we have research association or organization that typically um, are working in uh, in cancer uh, uh, research or in in, in uh, other kind of research of that kind that may have a more national wide uh, uh, aim or they may receive money from um, from the entire nation and. Uh, and so we distinguish that kind of organization from local organizations, such as voluntary organization and amateur sports association that has a very local component. So we clearly, we cannot exclude that people from other uh, municipality could donate money to a voluntar voluntary association located in a different municipality, but that could be quite unlikely given that the local um, uh, the local dimension and the local component of this kind of organization. Okay. Uh, so I, I just see that there are some questions, but so I just have to understand on which monitor. So uh, just just give me a direction in the month beginning. So just to be clear on that, individuals cannot decide the amount. So the amount is, is a proportion of the tax that they had to pay compared to their income. So for instance, if I have to pay $10,000, so if my tax would be $10,000, I could decide that the part of that $10,000, so in particular, Cinque per mille of these ten thousand dollars, so uh, would be cinque per mille would be what is fifty? No, yeah, is uh, yeah, is fifty fifty dollars. I can decide to to give fifty dollars, so the five cinque per mille to an organization, okay? So and uh, or to my municipality, okay? 
or eventually I could not express any any uh, any uh, preference. Okay. So. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think you were answering to my question the amount of variation. Yeah. I was that in my sorry. I may may have written it uh, wrongly. I was wondering how many people give the cinque per mille. So it's the amount of oh. people who decide to tick the box about giving the tax the the cinque per mille rather than not. Because I wonder because as an Italian I can't remember how the tax uh, how the form works, and I was wondering out of curiosity how much variation do we have in the people who actually give it. Meaning, how many people yeah. decide to give the Cinque per mille and how many don't? Yeah, and how many people also choose the organization to give it to? Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I, I, I'm trying to find it out uh, because um, so I, I should have, I should look to, I could answer it later because I should look at the at the paper and on uh, and um. Yeah, the absolutely. That is in was, the paper, so I, I do not remember exactly right it. now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thank but you. I will <laughs> answer. Yeah, okay. And um, so that is um, the way in which we are trying to 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 use our data. So this disentangling uh, the national dimension of the some kind of association that typically are the one that work in scientific and health research organization, and from all the others association, and so. Uh, given that we, we believe that, I mean, and there is also evidence, it's not just our belief, but there is also evidence that this kind of uh, association has a much local component compared to uh, the scientific and that uh, research organization. So, okay. So um, what we do is that clearly you may believe that, uh, and indeed, it, uh, I mean, it's reasonable and it's not just about you, but that our measure has many, as much more drawbacks than, than 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 pro and uh, so what we do is we we try to validate our measure uh, so our tax-based measure of social capital is floating uh, um, social capital that we could retrieve from the survey that is a uh, uh, aspect of daily life that is a survey that has been conducted by the italian national statistics uh, office uh, every year and basically interview roughly sixty thousand individuals and on top of many um question related to life in general as a, as a, as a section that is trying to measure um, uh, dimension of social capital. And there has been a recent paper by, that is unpacking social capital that has been recently published on, uh, on Economic Journal by Ruben Durant and co-author. And they use uh, uh, these um, um, individual data um, uh, in order to understand which are the most relevant dimension uh, in social uh, for for social capital, so which is the um, why we are validating our measure and we are not directly use uh, uh, this kind of measure provided by uh, by the Italian National uh, Statistics uh, Office. The first thing is that uh, these data are uh, are um, in individual data. Okay. And uh, uh, due to the kind of uh, um, way in which, uh, in which uh, <clears throat> certification has been done, I mean, these data are representative only for a very small subsample of Italian municipalities. Okay. So, uh, so these data are representative for Italy as a whole and are representative of the regional level. So for the 20 regions that we have in Italy, but they are not representative at municipality level. So that really is a, is a drawback if you want to study social capital as a, as a, uh, at the local level. So the way that we use is exploiting the uh, number of municipality for which uh, this survey is representative. We try to verify whether our data relate to that measure provided by ISTAT. That is the Italian... Uh, Statistical office. Okay, so basically, what we do, following the approach be, uh, proposed by Durante, we construct a measure of social capital at the municipality level using a principal component analysis, 
of the survival related to the level of individuals, uh, to the level <clears throat> of individual involving community. And we relate that to our measure of, uh, of social capital. And so here, that is uh, our measure of what we call the tax-based social capital, and that is the social participation. So that is the PCA index uh, derived from, uh, from the, this aspect of daily life uh, provided. So what we, we show uh, is uh, that there is a, <clears throat> even if uh, clearly that kind of uh, validation cannot be done for the entire sample of municipalities that we are using in our analysis, we provide evidence that for the subsample of municipalities that are, uh, for which uh, uh, those data are representative, we find that our measure of, <coughs> sorry, our measure of social capital is, is strongly related to uh, the, the other measure of social capital coming from the, uh, from the survey of the uh, national office. Okay. So in a way, that is a way to validate our, our measure, providing evidence that despite uh, the, the cons that our measure could, could have, uh, that is give us a, um, give, give us a picture that is consistent with other source of data that are trying to measure social capital. So what we do uh, uh, in, in, in the analysis. So um, we, we employ uh, uh, what is called a definitive techniques uh, that has allowed us to use uh, uh, what happened uh, in uh, to compare treated municipalities, so municipality that has been dissolved for mafia infiltration or criminal organization infiltration, uh, so that we are considering treated to to other municipality that has not been dissolved. Okay, so uh, in um really in a, in a <clears throat> in a nutshell that allows us to estimate. The, the causal effect of uh, mm, mm, organized crime on social capital. We, uh, we covered the years from 2009 to 2021, and we, we do also for, uh, for, for, for different samples. So that are uh, the, um, the, the main results. So we found a strong effect of, uh, um, here you have to imagine that there is a dissolution. So the removal of the criminal organization at the municipality level. So we observed that removing um, and so dissolving the uh, council, uh, the city council as, a, as an effect, a positive effect on uh, on, uh, on social capital formation. I'm gonna, so, mm, mm, provide you uh, other piece of evidence. So, so we, we are gonna exploit also uh, an event study framework. So in order to understand the dynamics uh, of the effect that we found uh, uh, in, previous, uh, in the previous study. So why? We are more interested in the dynamics than in uh, the, the estimate per se. Because clearly, um, uh, we want to understand first of all is that kind of effect that we find uh, after mafia, uh, after um, council dissolution, is just uh, uh, it, um, a one-time effect, or it has some persistence over time. So that is the first piece of the evidence. And also we want to test uh, and we want to be transparent uh, on, on showing whether uh, the main assumption behind that kind of estimate that is the parallel to an assumption uh, is verified in our data. So basically we want to be sure that independently of, on, on the treatment that we, uh, that we are mm, exploiting in order to give us the exogeneity we want to be sure that we are comparing 
municipality that before the treatment were in a way identical, or at least they were not too different. Okay, so and that is uh, uh, what uh, what we are referring to the parallel trend assumption. And I, I, I will I don't I will not bother you on that, but. There is a huge literature right now on a staggered definitive approach. So uh, in the last couple of years, I don't know how many papers on staggered definitive uh, emerged. So Borusiak, uh, uh, Santana, uh, Atiferi, the Shares Martin, there, are, there is a huge number of paper on, uh, on staggered uh, treatment adoption. So in the paper, we will provide all the different kind of estimators that we uh, that has become popular uh, over the last uh, two years, but uh, for which is, uh, for the sake of the presentation, I'm, I'm focusing on the Borisiak approach of 2022. And that is the dynamic. So that is, so before uh, the dissolution take place, so we do not have any difference in municipalities for which it concern uh, the effect of uh, dissolution on social capital. So meaning that the parallel trend exists, so meaning that the, the municipality that we are using for our analysis are before the treatment identical. And what we observe is that uh, that time zero, t plus zero, so is the, the period in which the, the, the dissolution takes place. And what we observe is that we, we observe an increase in social capital after the dissolution. So it, it, it seems to be a sort of persistence effect once uh, uh, mafia is being removed from the, uh, from the um, city council. So um, I will not bother you with all the battery of sensitivity chat that we perform using different definition, as I told you, of the dependent variable, alternative estimators, uh, alternative controls, alternative de definition of the solution, alternative sample and alternative cluster. But what I'm, I would like to, to stress more in, in what it remains, leaving then uh, time for Q&A, uh, is that the effect that we find on, uh, due to the dissolution of um, a city council is, uh, is just a matter of trust diversion or really uh, uh, represent a boost to citizen citizens' engagement. So, and we are, we, we will exploit uh, um, two uh, features of the data that we use on uh, Cinque per Mille that allows us to first measure uh, the decision of uh, individuals to give money to their municipality. So what happened to the money that uh, municipality received after the dissolution? And secondly, the other um, aspect is that um, a municipality could be dissolved not only for mafia reason, but it could, could be dissolved for other reasons differently from uh, organized crime. Okay. So it could be dissolved, for instance, because um, um, the, the political majority uh, is not more present in the municipality, or it could be dissolved for financial distress, or it could be dissolved for other reasons different from uh, organized crime. So and that, in a way, represents... Uh, a nice placebo test in order to see if the effect that we find for mafia dissolution are indeed nothing specific or of organized crime, but is just specific of dissolution itself. So we want to distinguish if dissolving a municipality has an effect per se, or the effect of dissolution is only due to once the, the municipality has been dissolved for mafia and not for other reasons. And in second place, we want to understand if uh, after the dissolution, individual decide to divert their money to, uh, uh, from municipality to the private sectors. Because we may think that after the dissolution, 
uh, individuals realize that uh, the municipality was coll coll colluded with uh, organized crime, there is a reduction in trust uh, in, uh, in uh, local polit politicians and that could, could affect the way in which they decide to allocate their cinque per mille to the municipality. Okay. So we try to disentangle these channels, okay? And uh, uh, we, once again, even in uh, using that second measure, uh, that is the, um, the number of taxpayers that decide to allocate the cinque per mille to, uh, to the municipality, we perform my validation uh, using the uh, ESTAT data. So I'm, I'm not gonna show you that validation. And what we find is that uh, indeed, even if uh, uh, just to, that was the effect of the dissolution on the increase in uh, um, cinque per mille to association, and that is the effect of the dissolution on uh, uh, cinque per mille to municipality. So they go in the opposite direction, even if, as you, um, as you may see, there is not a complete uh, diversion in the sense that that coefficient is roughly out of the previous one, okay? So it means that uh, individuals would increase the mm, cinque per mille to, um, to social organization much more of what they would reduce cinque per mille given to the municipality, okay? So, but clearly, um, which could be the alternative uh, effect or alternative, well, more than the effect, the, the alternative mechanism that could have, would explain our results. So, and we show that for instance, there is a, after the dissolution, there is an increase in the number of voluntary association in a municipality, okay? Or, and we want also to understand whether that effect would be simply due to a sort of increase in economic growth after the city council dissolution. So what we show is that after the dissolution, there is an increase in the number of voluntary association in a uh, in municipality. Okay. So that seems to be consistent with the idea that uh, it's not just a matter of uh, giving money. Okay. So because on one side, I mean, there is an effort in finding the ID tax code and all the other things that I told you, but on the other side, that is not an extra, does not represent an extra cost for individuals. So that cinque per mille, if you not decide to allocate your cinque per mille, it's not that you pay less taxes. Taxes, you, you will pay the same amount of taxes. The only the only possibility that you have is the way in which you want to allocate your taxes. But why the increase in the number of public uh, voluntary association implies that you need to be really engaged in uh, in the social life uh, in this kind of uh, social activities. And so that is re really represents an effort in, in, in that. Uh, um, so that are the result uh, using, uh, sorry, uh, including also the existing association before as a controls, okay? We see that uh, the income effect doesn't seem to, to play a role at least in our setting, because we do not find any effect on, on the dissolution on income. Okay, so that could be, you may think that given that income increased, then automatically will we'll increase uh, um, the allocation of money to, uh, to, um, to the municipality. Okay, and that is, was, is the table that I was uh, mentioning before. So that is the dissolution for administrative or political causes and social capital. So meaning what that? If the municipality has been dissolved for reasons that are different from um, uh, mafia infiltration, that could be for instance, uh, uh, financial distress, right? It could be administrative reasons. So it could happen at least in Italy that uh, due to, to that reason, the, the municipality will be dissolved and for, uh, for years, um, uh, ordinary management is run by uh, a commissioner. Okay. 
But what we observe is that if you are considering that reason of the solution, we do not find any effect on social capital. So the effect that we find seems to be very specific and very related to organized crime. It's not just a, an, a, an effect of, of um, um, the solution per se. So um, we, 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 we combine our data uh, using uh, uh, some other characteristics of the municipality data, such as uh, education level, such as uh, uh, gender composition, such as uh, municipal expenditure or deficit, and what we find that it seems to be the most imp one of the most important driver is uh, uh, the dissolution and uh, and uh, the education of the uh, of the average education of the administrations. Okay, so um, just to wrap up and leave in time for Q and A, um, what we find is that. Uh, um, at least uh, it's consistent what we, what we found in, uh, in our analysis uh, um, that going back to that, uh, to, 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 to that results, okay? So it seems that uh, the level of, uh, um, the quality of politicians may matter for restoring the loss of trust covered uh, at least caused by mafia infiltration and by the dissolution of mafia councils, okay? And uh, obviously, uh, the point is that public officials are elected, so there's also part of a choice by, made by, by, by the individuals as well. So concluding, we provide, uh, we try to provide evidence that uh, organized crime is gonna affect social capital formation. And we could provide that evidence given the nature of the data that we are using. So there are 10 variants at a very disaggregated level. And, uh, the, and we provide some uh, suggestive uh, mechanism through which that happens in order to understand not only the effect per se, but which, which could be the channels through which we, uh, we may uh, affect social capital formation, at least in that, in that context. Okay. So uh, I, I will not have any other... Um, so I finished my presentation. So I think that we have time for... I have time to answering any questions that uh, comes from the floor. So yeah, thank thanks you, very much. everyone. Thanks very much, Paolo, for the presentation. Certainly fascinating to hear about the, the effect of uh, organized crime on the way in which uh, social capital forms uh, in Italy. So um, we do have some time for questions. If anyone has questions, you can post in the chat. I'd be happy to, to uh, then call upon you. You can unmute yourself to, to ask your question. Or if you're not in a position to ask the question yourself, I'll happily read it out on your behalf. Um, just let us know in the chat if you would like me to do that. Uh, you can raise your hand. is probably the best way to do it under the, the reactions button uh, within Zoom. So there's been a few questions in the chat from Jacob. Would you like to kick us off? Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself, feel free to ask a question. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for giving us this uh, presentation. It's hard to overstate how much I enjoyed it. Um, my first question is, is how are the administrators being chosen? And do we see some differences in the way they are chosen in the impact on social capital um, they have? Um, because I think, um, for example, Berlusconi, in my view, didn't have the best record on good governance. And how were, yeah. how were the national level being able to choose more able, more honest administrators than 
on the local government side? Is this um, just a North South thing or how is there other mechanism behind um, behind the assurance yeah. that there are more able administrators? Okay, so I think that um, what we at least we observe over, I mean, uh, clearly Berlusconi represents a, a significant change in, in Italian politics, but I think that is in world politics as well. I mean, uh, uh, considering uh, the candidates that we had in other countries uh, right now. So, but the point is um, that the national party may play a role in uh, deciding uh, uh, or in forcing local communities or local parties to um, uh, to present some some sort of candidates that is could be uh, a particularly true in big cities such as Rome, Milan, Turin, Naples that even if they are local election really are sort of national competition more than local election, but that is much less likely in small municipality. And if you consider that in Italy, for instance, I, I do not have recent data, but just to give you, you an idea, uh, roughly 70% of Italian municipality has uh, a population of lower than 10,000 inhabitants. Okay, so I, I would, I, I mean, I, I, I would see your pro. I mean, I, I definitely that could be an issue, and is an issue for big cities or for a province capital, okay. But I don't think that is an issue in general. So, in the sense that national government or national parties, more in general, will not be able too much to also because at, at that level, uh, at least my experience uh, is a. Uh, um, below a certain amount of uh, municipalities, uh, the competition is not really among parties, but is among uh, civic, uh, I don't know, in Italy we call civic list or civic parties uh, more than a uh, party that exists at the national level. So I don't know if I, it, it was, uh, so... Yes, is, uh, uh, some of um, I and I didn't mean to challenge you um, about this because yeah. I, I absolutely buy um, uh, by the point and I um, I think it's fascinating because um, it answers one of the questions I always had about this low trust or low social capital equilibria. What can we do? And as a, um, a, a targeted external intervention that can, could solve this problem and. Uh, if I understand your paper correctly, it says yes, somehow, at least to some degree. Um, what I'm just, uh, how I, I was just trying to understand how are the administrators being chosen? Are the civic administrators or um, they are picked up from the community? How, um, how, are, how much do they know about the community or the municipality before they go to um, this place and um, how how much competencies they do they have? Do they you said it's limited to rather administrative task, but um, um, perhaps yeah, but you, you, you are, could just you are elaborate the, a bit. But you are referring to the commissioner in in that sense. Okay. Yes, so, definitely. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I uh, typically are that the commissioner is appointed by what is called a prefetto. That is basically how to. Uh, to explain what is prefetto is basically prefetto is the is is the public official that within a munis within a province represent the government. Okay, so and uh, um, and typically uh, the commissioner is chosen by prefetto, and uh, um, and most of the time uh, are other public officials. So that could be so I. I well, that, that is a good suggestion in order to, I mean, just to show in the paper also, because we didn't do that in the paper. And so my is just basically, what I'm saying is based on what I know about that, but it could be important to show also uh, what happened after. So in terms of commissioner, the only thing that I can tell you is that is based on, is, is a choose based by the prefetto that is the, is the public official that is is to present the, the government in in, uh, in in each province? Yeah. 
So I, I just give me a second because uh, uh, I don't know how to to share. Um, so what you are seeing right now is uh, that because I, I so uh, okay you should you should see that is the the box related to the choose uh, how to choose the cinque per mille. So that is. Uh, uh, the first, uh, uh, as you see here in uh, bottom, bot bottom right, is uh, supporting a municipality activities. Okay. So you, you just have to sign. Okay. So that is supporting research and scientific activities. You have to sign and put the fiscal code. That is uh, uh, supporting uh, health research. You have to sign and put the fiscal code, and that is supporting voluntary association, social association, non-profit association. And you have to sign and put the fiscal code, and that is a uh, uh, sport uh, association um, within the Olympic Committee, and you have to sign and put the fiscal code. So that is the way in which is uh, is organized. So we can distinguish between uh, supporting municipality supporting uh, um, voluntary or non, non, a non-profit organization. And those two other boxes are the ones that are more relevant and the, at the national level in the sense that it is, is supporting scientific research or health research. Okay. So that is, uh, that is uh, just to, 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 to show you, uh, to show, I mean, given that, some question that I, I read in the chat was about the what the, what what the choice practically what was was made. Yeah, that is the the the, the box that you find in the, in the, in the tax declaration. Yeah. So, Jacob, did you have a follow up question? Uh, yes, another question, but perhaps someone else is also yeah. having a question. I was trying um, to find out the descriptive statistics, but okay, we'll see if there's anybody else who has questions in the chat. A few people have uh, expressed their gratitude and had to leave the the meeting, uh, but I can't see any other questions well, in the chat. So perhaps Jacob, you could carry on with your next question. That's the next, that's... yeah, go. Ahead. Okay, my next aspect would be. Um not directly related to your paper and just about um, the way of um, the way forward for research. You mentioned that we have this trade-off be be um, between having a huge, robust, multi-dimensional uh, multi index and having a fine grade time um, yeah. uh, index or uh, data. Um, do you have some ideas how we could combine both aspects um, at least to some degree, because I think this variation of social capital is highly <coughs> important. Um, and at the same time, we have, um, for example, Bjornskov, his critique that social capital is not really one homogeneous um, construct. And um, so it would be um, yeah, interesting to know, uh, or, or it would be a great step forward if you could show that even in over time, most dimensions behave in the same direction. Yeah. Just so, if you have uh, some ideas. Well, so I think that there are, there is a, an additional trade-off in the sense that one is uh, related to, uh, to the doing research per se, you know, and the other thing is that, at least in academia, that most of the research is aims at being published. Okay. So, and uh, due to that uh, pressure that we had uh, in academia, uh, most of the most of the work uh, try to push forward the the analysis and try to present um, new evidence and uh, data that at least your um, reference community believe to be 
original or that are really able to answer to some specific question. And that is the reason why, at least in my, in my opinion, there, there has been a, a huge effort in moving to uh, time variant and very disaggregated level, at least in economics. Okay. So, and that is implies also on the other side that most of the wars that uh, use uh, mm, uh, non, well, non disaggregated data or very aggregated data and not and time variant and time invariant data uh, would it would be much uh, uh, much more difficult publishing this kind of work. So that is the first trade off that I see. Okay, but apart from that trade off, in practical term, I think that um, what uh, at least what we try to do in in, in our analysis, trying to validate uh, this time variant or time uh, so time variant and fine grain measure of social capital with the traditional measure of social capital that are that has been used uh, uh, during the last 20 years in order to provide evidence that um, this kind of measure even if are eventually able to measure a single dimension or a specific dimension uh, they will provide uh, the same intuition behind the general measure. On the other side, one other aspect is could be related to the uh, real dimension of social capital or the, the let me rephrase, so which is the relevant geographical aggregation for studying social capital. Okay. Because um, that is not obvious, at least from my point of view, because for some kind of issues, we may agree that municipality or even neighbor could be the right geographical level of aggregation. But in other kind of setting, I mean, even provincial data or regional data could be fine if the kind of answer that we are trying to, uh, the kind of question that you are trying to answer is more general. So, I mean, I think that <clears throat> at least um, in, in uh, well, I do not have a I do not have a, an answer for, to, 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 um, for, for your question, but I think that there are several different uh, issues. One is, okay, the, the bias that we had in academia for publishing, and that is clearly is restricting how wide are the questions that we are answering, okay? And that is a, is a drawback, and we need to be conscious about that. The other thing is that it's not obvious which is the relevant geographical level of aggregation to study some social phenomenon. Because we may think that some kind of social interaction may happen at, very, at a very uh, lower level of aggregation. That could be even a, a municipality, could be a street or could be whatever. Okay? There are many papers on crime that really exploit that kind of geographical disaggregation because it happens that in, in for crime there are what is what are called odd spots. Okay, so and that crime typically happen in very some in very some specific area in a, in a city. Okay, that could be really a corner, or it could yeah, okay. But for what it what it concerns social capital is not obvious which is the relevant uh, geographical aggregation, and uh, I think that one of the advantage of having. Uh, very low disaggregated data is that you can always aggregate disaggregated level. And while it is not obvious that you couldn't do the same with aggregated level, so it's much more difficult to disaggregate aggregated data that exist at aggregated level. So I can create an index at the provincial level or regional level using my data, but starting from regional data, I cannot go back to uh, municipality data. Okay, so... Um, I think that on the other side, uh, increasing the number of observation allows us to, to have more, at least now I'm, I'm saying uh, uh, from the econometric point of view, allows us to give to, to a more consistent and robust estimate of, uh, of the parameters that we are estimating. Uh, Jacob, do you have any follow up? Uh, yeah, even further from the paper away. Um, 
so as I said, I really like your paper and your your approach, and I think it's um one I'm I've I'm politically active for for a long time, and it's one of the things where where I can cl <clears throat> most clearly think we as economists are political relevant because um and uh, it's it's absolutely understandable for um I think most politicians that they um need to have some community support um, for creating public goods. Um, what are your ideas? Um, oh, to, to rephrase, do you think we as economists uh, communicate our results about um, social capital sufficiently to politics? And um, what else could we do? Or what do you think are the ways to go forward in this direction to really increase the politics or the political implementation of results like yours? Okay. Uh, that's, I mean, your question would, 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 would uh, call for extra time. But I mean, apart from that, I, I mean, uh, I, I see your point. I, I really think that as, I mean, as economists, and that is a, a critique starting from myself, but, but I think that could be generalized to other economists. We try to answer to any question that is also seems to be uh, economically relevant or not related to economics. So on one side, I mean, at least my perception is that the other other fields believe that economists are sort of uh, believes to 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 be able to answer to anything. Okay, uh, and that clearly. It could, it, could do, it could represent uh, an issue. On the other side, I think also that as economists, we are in, in some specific uh, field, we are using a very rigorous methodology that really allows us to, to estimate what is the causal effect. And partly because I, I'm, I'm, I'm biased on that because I'm, I'm really teaching the impact evaluation model. So, and, and then I'm biased on that, but really estimating a, a causal effect is crucial to uh, provide evidence or to provide support to politicians and to policy. Because clearly what is relevant in understanding in which way playing with the variables really affect our outcome. And knowing that that is a, there is a causal effect is crucial for policy implementation. But, and then, I mean, the potential uh, effect of our research could be huge, but on the other side, what I really think is that in terms of, uh, for in spe specifically for which it concerns social capital, is a very difficult uh, uh, topic to uh, um, for dissemination. In the sense that, uh, due to the uncertainty about the definition of social capital itself, politicians, at least that is my experience. Okay, but it, that could be different in other countries. But politician are not able really to grab, uh, which is the real implication of what we are studying. And so they are not really able to, to understand, uh, okay, but in real term, what I should do and which is my political payoff for in doing that, okay? Also, because when we are talking about social capital, we are talking about something that is moving, but is slowly moving. So the, the, the political payoff is, is really in the long term. It's not something that is happening uh, Within a, an electoral mandate, you no. Know? So it's not about it's not that after four years or three years or five years you can really get some some uh, some effects on uh, related to social capital. And the same is for education. So every time we we see that we told that we should invest more in education be, in order to reduce some kind of I don't know risky behavior or uh, or increasing labor market or opportunities. But at the end of the day. That policy has a very long-term payoff. Okay, so is, and so typically, politicians tend to invest on uh, something on on, poli on policies that has a short-term payoff. Okay, so but on top of that, probably on, on the other side, and uh, as uh, at least I'm saying as a um, uh, university professor. Uh, We do not have, uh, I would say, um, uh, well, probably, I don't want to 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 say something that is not uh, 
was let's say politically correct, but uh, I think that as university professor, we are really too much focused on research, on scientific research, and less focus on uh, how to disseminate our results. And um, in my experience, I did, I mean, I'm, I'm working on social capital and crime uh, uh, since, uh, I don't know, now I'm 50, so I ended, uh, my PhD was, I was 28, so it's 25 years that I'm working more or less on this kind of thing. So at the least in Italy, I find very few attention from, very little attention from politicians to, to study related to crime or study related to social capital. So really, uh, I think that is, uh, is, is a matter once, I mean, it is related to the way in which uh, the, uh, the profession is. So that is much, is too much related on, uh, on publishing. And on the other thing is that related that these kind of topics such as social capital or education does not provide policy intervention that has a short-term uh, uh, implication or short-term payoff. Thanks a lot, really interesting. All right, are there any other questions? We have time maybe for one more question. If there anybody else has one, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask your question, or you can quickly post in the chat, but it'll have to be pretty quick if you want to post. Uh, lots of people saying thanks very much for a very interesting presentation, uh, Paolo. It's been it's really been fascinating to hear all about it. Doesn't look like we have any further questions, so I think we can end the session there. Um, on behalf of the association, thanks very much for taking the time to give this presentation. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's it's been really fascinating to to hear all about it. Thank you, thank you all for participating. I was very I was very happy to to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.